Hi guys, in this video I'm going to briefly talk about the T distribution that we use in statistics and I'm going to teach you how to use a T table okay so I'm going to be pulling on and off bits and pieces of the table to show you how to find different things that you might need in a very um, basic way alright so first off I've drawn uh, what a T distribution might look like <clears throat> so if I have a sample size of 20 I'm going to have a D T distribution with degrees of freedom equal to n minus 1 which would be 19 so let's just say for our purposes this is the T distribution with 19 degrees of freedom and this is the one we're going to concern ourselves with for this example for these examples okay so first off let's look at uh, how we could use the t table to get us um, a t critical value for a c percent confidence interval so let's start with confidence interval so c percent confidence interval <clears throat> for mu You'll recall this is one of the first places where you're required to get this value when you're getting the confidence interval for mu. Okay, remember there was it was x bar plus or minus, and this is what we're going to focus on: a t critical value for c percent confidence and a certain degrees of freedom. Those are just subscripts times s over the square root of the sample size. <clears throat> okay, and what I'm going to concern myself with in this first example is just this value, how to get this value. Okay, so let's set C to 95 and let's, do, let's use that as our example. So we have N is 20 and C is 95. You're asked to get a 95% confidence interval for mu. Okay. So what you're going to be looking, what we're going to be looking for in the table is to get the t critical value for 95 confidence level and 19 degrees of freedom. Okay, this number comes from the table, and we replace it here. Okay, and x bar and s and square root of n would all be things that you would just plug in. Okay, so this is the bit that comes from the table when you want to get a 95% confidence interval and your sample size is 19. So let me pull up the table. So here is the bottom half of our t-table, at least the one that I use in my courses. Um, you might be looking at something different. The reason why I'm showing this bottom half is first off because I can't fit all this, the whole table on the screen and have you actually be able to see the numbers. And since the confidence level is listed at the bottom of this table, okay, we're going to find our confidence level. So this is a confidence level for a confidence interval. So I start at the bottom, I get 95 because that's the confidence level I'm asked to get. My degrees of freedom was 19. Okay, so clearly my t critical value is going to be 2.093. Okay, if it was a 99% confidence interval, you would get 99% down here at the bottom of the table. And if it was n20, then degrees of freedom would still be 19. This would be your critical value. Okay, so that's how you use the t table to get t critical values for a specific level of confidence and you use those when you have to get a confidence interval so let's go back our number was 2.093 so this guy here equals 2.093 and that's what you would place here okay along with x bar s n square root of 20 in this case okay so that's one way we use the t table the other way is in hypothesis testing and let's just be clear in the hypothesis tests we did we had three alternatives there was the alternative where 
mu was greater than some number, hypothesized value. There was the hypothesis where mu was less than some number, some hypothesized value. And then there was the alternative hypothesis where we were just testing whether mu was different, so not equal to some hypothesized number. Okay, so first let's deal with this. These are one tail tests, right? So let's pull up the top of the table because that's where you would need to first look when you're when you're getting a t value, a t cutoff value for a hypothesis test with one of these two alternatives. Okay, this one or this one. All right. So let's pull up the table. So this was the bottom half of the table, and we need the top half of the table. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so you'll notice there are three rows at the top here. One, two, three. One is called, we're not going to deal with this guy, okay? We're going to focus on these two. If it's a one tail alternative, it's one tail because of the sign here, we would choose this row, the one tail row. We would go over to the alpha of the test. Okay, so these are the alphas: alpha 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.2. So let's just set alpha at a typical 0 0.05. We would go over to 0 0.05, and then let's keep n still 20. So degrees of freedom is still 19. So we would drop down. And that would be our cutoff. Okay, 1.729. We'd go back here, and this indicates that our rejection region would have been on the right side. So this guy, right? This is like an arrow pointing that way, right? So the rejection region is over here, all right? And that 1.729 is precisely what cuts off this region from this region. This is the rejection region, right? Double R. Okay? And this is the fail to reject region. All right? If this was your alternative, then your rejection region was on the exact opposite side. So if you let me erase all this, we're just going to flip this. It's still one tail, so I don't want both tails shaded. Right? So I will draw my rejection for this alternative. I draw my rejection region here on the left side. A T value that's really small will cause us to reject HO. So with this alternative, it's on this side. Or you can always remember it with this mnemonic that that is like an arrow pointing to the direction of the side that the rejection region is going to be on. Rejection region. Okay? And we already got the number, it was 1.729, except we have to remember that this is the opposite side. So it's negative 1.729. And it's negative because it's the same number, rather because just negative because of the property of symmetry that the t distribution has similar to the z distribution okay so this would be the rejection region this would be the fail to reject region okay reject ho fail to reject ho all right so those are the one tail alternatives now the two tail alternative over here so this is two tail so you're going to have two rejection regions, okay? Meaning you're going to have one. Let's erase this guy. We don't need him anymore. Remember, that was the one for this guy, alpha 0.05. Okay? Now let's also use 0.05 here. And let's get... 
the two tails of rejection for this alternative hypothesis. So let's pull up the table again. It's not coming to the front, so bear with me one second. Okay, so we have two tails of rejection. So we go over to the two tail row and we go over to alpha 0.05. We still are going to keep N20, so we have 19 degrees of freedom. There is our T cutoff. All right, so let's go back and draw this in. So 2.093. Sorry, that's a zero. So this is one rejection region, and the other one is a mirror image, negative 2.093. These are the two rejection regions okay any t any test t test statistic that falls either here or here would cause you to reject ho at alpha of five percent okay so that's how you use the t table so we did we use the t table to get a 95% confidence interval when n was 20 and degrees of freedom was 19 and we learn how to use the t-table in the one tail alternative for the mean test and two tail alternative for the mean test okay so I hope this was helpful uh, make sure to subscribe and check out my other videos till next time have a great day